Hi folks, time for your hobby nightmares again. Um, I've decided to split this video up into two, so instead of being a one ultra long video, because I don't really have the voice for it today, uh, we're doing two around about 40 minute videos, if I can make it that far. We'll see how many of these are really interesting. I've read about eight or nine of them so far, and they all seem pretty cool. There'll be a lot of broken models in this batch, which we're going to be going through. So if you like the videos, um, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Um, the Discord is free. We don't charge for it, so just come on the Discord and say hello. It would be very, very nice if you did so, because we're always looking to meet new people. There's, a few, there's hundreds of us on there now. I think we're like over a thousand now, I think, looking at it. I'll check later. Anyway, here we go. Let's have a look at our first story, shall we? So, this one's sent in by uh, Netzach. He says, uh, not my personal story, but I watched it happen. I was playing in an apocalypse battle, uh, with, with set rounds. Some people playing Horde armies were panicking uh, to move their whole army, etc. Because we had uh, set time limits. There were a few super heavies, but one was a guy's converted Nurgle Warhound Titan from Forge World. That sounds pretty cool. Towards the end of the game, as it was coming down to the end, one of the Orc players accidentally punched the Warhound while trying to grab casualties, and kaboom, four foot dropped to the floor. It exploded beyond recognition. Oh, for fuck's sake. The guy bought it around three weeks prior, and the player that broke it was a kid unable to even pay shipping for another. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. So, um... Uh, I mean, if you're at Warhammer World, then I can see, you know, why you would bring such a model to Warhammer World, to, to show it off and to have it there and to be on a big, big battlefield. I would never bring models this large to a normal game store, to a games workshop, to a hobby store, whatever. I, I, I just wouldn't because you're, you're almost asking for something to go wrong. I don't trust other people in general, um, and I definitely don't trust them around my property that I've spent a lot of time on. Um, I'm one of these people who, you know, do not pick up my models. If we are, if we're playing a game... If we are, if I'm painting or playing a game, whatever, do not pick up my models without expressly asking my permission first. Because at the end of the day, especially if I'm painting, at the end of the day, you don't know what's drying and what isn't. Let's just put that out there as a thing. You have no idea whether my models are dry or not if I'm painting other things. Um, and especially for on the tabletop as well, I consider it worse than, not worse than cheating, but it, it's nearly there. If I'm playing against somebody and they pick up my models to remove them and place them other in, or, or do whatever they want to them or move them from here to there. It, it just It's a pet peeve. And I will get instantly, not pissed off, but I will respectfully ask you to not do that, you know. But even doing that, it kind of ruins the atmosphere of the game. So just don't do it. It's, it's, it's the height of rudeness. Do not touch other people's models. And always be careful around the tabletop, especially when you've got other things going on. I mean... As one of the orc players, right, if you're getting rid of boys that are dying in combat, dude, you can take your time. Just, just scoop them all up in one hand and get rid of them. You know what I mean? Like, like who cares? Because there's so many of them. And just be careful. And and th th so it goes on both people. Do not bring your really expensive stuff to a really busy wargaming night, number one. And number two, also, don't, you know... don't. Be careful around other people's models. Simple. So, Squidmaster. <laughs> it's all these names, man. Um, my best was somewhat quiet, but painful. Okay, me in my hobby room building a demon prince. This is ex this is a really nice metal one uh, before there were plastic ones. Quite happy with it. Put it down. Cat jumps on the table. I shoot it away. It jumps and knocks prince off table. I put hand down to grab it. The Prince's sword slides right into my hand. Oh my god, I may have filed it a little too well. I, with the Demon Prince and its sword sticking out of my thumb, go down the road to A&E. It's that far in. Oh my god. Several hours in A&E waiting, a couple of stitches and a numb thumb afterwards. Cat too cute to punish. I still have the scar. Oh my god. But to be fair, you know, we've all got a few war scars. Um, I'll tell you about my... Uh, mine was... Um, so, an ex of mine, let's just say, um, you know, doing doing the old deed there, you know. Uh, she gets a little a little too excited and knocks a glass of wine 
off the table it then smashes on my foot and this is when my toe is like curled up so it right on right on the bone and slices it all down the middle. I don't notice for ages. And it's the same leg I was stabbed in, by the way. This leg's gone through a lot of shit over the years. Um, yeah, so we've all got scars. <clears throat> well, that one is more unfortunate than most, good master. That is horrible. Um, I did I did puncture myself once with a Dread Knight sword. Now, the reason why I convert Dread Knights to being really, very dynamic poses is because I don't want the sword facing upwards because me being a klutz will always stab myself with it and end up bleeding out or whatever, right? Um, but this is a general thing when I'm just sitting there painting my own business and I reach up to get another pot of paint, my arm goes over the sword, goes onto the sword and impales itself on the sword. It's a plastic sword, but it's that sharp and that facing upwards out of the box. It just goes in a little bit and I go, ah, and I, cut, I pull it back and there's a puncture wound on my arm that is now, you know, you know not spurting blood, but definitely bleeding quite profusely. Um... So yeah, I think we've all got stories like that about uh, being injured by our own models. Yours is a bit more unfortunate than mine, because mine was just me being an idiot, to be honest with you. Um, so, Commander Ace. The entrance and exit at Warhammer World has a flight of stairs. <laughs> Indeed it does. I, I can see where this is going. Uh, cure a guy leaving... I'm, in fact, the amount of drunks I've seen walking down those stairs over the years. Um, yeah. Quite a few. Uh, I, I have been one of them on at least three occasions where where because towards the end of the night normally they let you out the back way in bugman's bar there is a back way that you, can, you can walk out and you can actually get downstairs pretty quickly um but at the end of the night they shut that because they're closing for the night and so they want everyone out i've gotten out the front door so the amount of times where i've had you know one or two many sherbets and i've been going down those stairs and just thinking i'm not making it i'm not making it one night we went for a night out in in nottingham and we started drinking to me and a few other staffers we started drinking in bugman's bar because um, we went up for the, we went up for the retail workshop about two days before the retail workshop because we both had a week off that was starting on that Wednesday, so they gave us next. To, to, this is how cool games workshop are sometimes because the, the retail workshop actually fell on dates that we booked off. We booked off like six months before. They gave us two extra days off at the end of our holiday, which is really cool because we had to come into work obviously to go to the retail workshop for two days. So, yeah, like, we, we went down to, so we made a weekend of it, basically went down to Warhammer World on the Thursday night. We didn't start training till Saturday morning, so Thursday night we were heading down, it's a student night in Nottingham. Um, we are going to a metal bar and a metal club, a rock club. And, yeah, so, yeah, that, that was a night where I'd had maybe eight beers in Bugman's and we were talking to the White, white Dwarf guys. And the White Dwarf guys are really, really nice. And they will sit there and talk to you about shit. Because at the end of the day, they're writers and they need ideas. And so they just throw... Have you, have you ever been in a, in, a, in a conversation with somebody who really wants to know everything about you and they're really interested in you? It, they're awesome, aren't they? I love those conversations. Because um, you, really, you don't often get them. I always try to be that person for other people. So it's very rare that somebody's doing it for me. So I always remember uh, uh, that night with a... With a with a tear in my eye. Anyway, cue a guy leaving, carrying four or five plastic boxes of minis and a Warhound Titan or something large and impressive on top. Dude, what an idiot. What are you doing? What are you doing? It was way too much to be carrying to carry it all in one go. Yeah, no shit. He stumbled, tripped over his own feet or something, and, well, everything went airborne. Bits of models and open boxes everywhere. Honestly, how it looked from where I was... He would probably have been best off scooping it all up into a box, selling it as a massive bits box, and starting all over again. I semi-regularly see people drop boxes or minis or knock a tray off a table at Warhammer World, but this one was the worst by far. In brackets, I work at Warhammer World. Right, cool. Well, yeah, I mean, that that I, I guess Warhammer World would be even worse, considering, you know, um, a lot of people are going to bring their really nice, impressive stuff, aren't they, to Warhammer World? So if, the, if stuff goes over... And plus, there's a lot of people there to see it, too. Hmm. Moon Turtle says, I was doing commissions and building some of my own stuff. My table was near the window... <laughs> the window AC in that apartment. Right, so you're in the States. So in the States, in older homes, they have really weird... Like, I had one in my room when I was in the States. There's this fan that's on the window... And it has like a cooler on it, and it just it just blows air in. It's actually really nice, um, but yeah, it is really funny the way the way that they the way that it is set up. So anyway, just so you know what he's talking about. 
One day, a bad storm rolled into town. The AC fell onto a large portion of my army and collapsed that old wooden table, ruining a bunch of commission models I was working on. I've never had to hand in so many refunds or buy whole new models for them, not to mention my army was absolutely crushed. Oh, for fuck's sake, that's horrible. That's horrible. Because you're not even replacing your own models. I hate that. That's that's disgusting. <laughs> I really hate that story. Because even if you're paying up for somebody else's army, that's terrible. Anyway, the next one got my blood boiling. And it's from Bamge. And the next one really got my blood boiling. Um, so, I was playing with someone I'd only met for the second time at my friendly local game store. They don't have a Warhammer table, so I bring my own terrain, mats, etc. Everything, including my army, is painted. Along with my, w along with being rude, my opponent kept whacking or moving either my models or the terrain with his arms or ruler. Each time it happened, I would calmly ask him to avoid it if he could. He, he would get angry and say, it was just an accident. Yeah, arms one thing, because there are quite a lot of uh, fat dudes in the hobby. Arm is one thing, your ruler is another. If you get your, your little tape measure out and you start poking my models with it, that tape measure is going squarely up your anus. Like, literally. One, the, you do it once, and I'd ask you not to. If you do it again, I'm taking it off you, and I'm putting it up your ass. Like, I've worked too hard on these models for you to fuck around with them. And I, I'm, I'm super... Anybody who's played with me, I'm super chill. Right? I'm super, super, super chill. Never used to be, back in the day. Before I worked for DW, I was fucking awful. Like, you know, I, I, was, I wasn't that guy, but I was just like, I didn't enjoy the game for what it was, because it was 7th, and it was really formation heavy, and I didn't like it, and then when I started working Games Workshop, I played so many games and lost so many games that it just became second nature to me just to start enjoying the game rather than, you know, going to try and win every single time, which is why I became more of a lore player than a, than a gamey player. Um, but this would really piss me off. There's only a few ways to really get to me on the tabletop, and this is one of them. At one, at one point, he moved my model with the ruler so he could deep strike. I asked him how he would feel if I disrespected his stuff, and he got really nasty. I tapped my ruler for the first time on one of his models, albeit intentionally. It was nothing compared to the 20 plus he had done so far. He started yelling and attacked my freshly painted repulsor executioner, trying to scratch it with the metal bit of his ruler. I tried to stop him, but he hit it like three times and knocked the turret off. I was already packing up everything at this point because I didn't feel safe for myself or my property I had spent years painting. The worst part is the employees asked us both to leave just because they heard yelling. I hadn't raised my voice at all and was already leaving so it, was, so it felt terrible being kicked out for someone screaming in my face and damaging my stuff. The guy kept acting like nothing was wrong and I was so happy to get out of there. At home I looked over the repulse and the damage was minimal so I varnished it with, a, with, with Storm Shield. Thank the Emperor. Um, I applaud you, Bamj, for your for your self control. Um, if this is if this is me, I know I know my own temper. Um, I I'm the kind of guy. Uh, I I used to have a really short fuse back in the day, but now it's like really 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 long fuse. Like I I, I generally won't lose it with anything or anyone, um, until I do. And then, and then all bets are off. So, so, so getting to this, um, this is one of the few things that can really push me. And if somebody, if I reacted that way, because you, because you, you did it in, in in a nice way, you asked him very nicely, and then when he kept doing it, you just said, "Look, if, how would you feel if I did that to your models, man? Come on, you know, let, let's be respectful here." And he reacts by trying to scratch one of your models and whacking it with his ruler. I honestly think, I, I, I always try not to physically harm people, but that is one of those times where if he leant over the table to do that, I would have felt very tempted to grab two tufts of hair from the back of his head and slammed his nose into the fucking table. Honestly, I, I, honestly, I, 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 would have, I would have been very close to losing it completely with him. Um, but at that stage, you're opening up a whole kind of worms because these guys can never fight. They're all bark and they're all hat and no cattle. You know what I mean? All bark, no bite. They can never fight. And so they would just, he would just lie on the floor screaming and you get sued and probably, you know, slung in Nick overnight. So you did the right thing, man. I, my hat's off to you. Very well done. Um, honestly, I don't know how you did it because I would have just... <sighs> anyway. Wombat Madicus. 
where do where do you guys get these names from? Because there, there's just some absolutely fucking weird ones. Anyway. Okay, fam. I was running an Apocalypse game at my friendly local game store years ago for the 6th edition launch. Okay, cool. We had a bunch of cool lists. I opted out playing myself so I could oversee the game. That guy had brought his competition 2,000 point detachments and a ton of other stuff, of course, yes. That wasn't the issue. The issue was, all night, he kept sliding the bombardment template around for his artillery. He managed to piss everyone off, even people on his own team. He'd lean over, place the template, and ask for, for an opponent to check. As the other player checked placement, he'd slowly just move it over to cover more troops. He loved infuriating people. His entire tournament tactic was just to be a scumbag and put everybody off their guard. He reveled in it. The worst part was that he spent so much money when the new owner bought the place that they were really cosy. He was repeatedly asked to knock it off. But after an hour, after half an hour or an hour, he'd start teasing someone with that template. It's like he just couldn't help himself. I literally wasn't given the authority to kick him out, so I just came upstairs from the game room, went went to the went to the back comic book storage area, and fucking screamed. I was fucking furious. My co-workers felt bad. They said I was shaking. To this day, I blame myself. I should have just kicked him out and pissed off the store over owner slash got fired. Since then, the community stopped playing with that guy. They openly make fun of him for being that guy in open casual events. Uh, and he only ever plays I ITC tournaments, which I no longer run, thank the Emperor. Um, okay, so, a few things on this one. I've come ac across many of these people, of, of these that guys. I, I, I tend to think, even friends of mine use the term that guy um, too much, you know. This is a that guy. This is, this is what a that guy is, okay, in terms of the hobby. Um, somebody who brings a woefully overpowered list to a friendly event and then proceeds to try and get under everybody's skin because, he, in, his, in his opinion, well, you know, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen, right? But if somebody slapped this motherfucker in the face for the way he behaves, he would be the first one to whinge and complain because, I'm telling you now, that's what bullies do. That's what bullies do. The second anybody gives them any sort of frontage, any sort of back, back push... To say that's enough, they whinge and moan and cry, saying that the other person's bullying them. That's what that's what people like this do. This is a this is somebody who is an absolute stain on the hobby, and most of the people who turn you off from playing the hobby, this is what they're like. Thankfully, I don't think they're as, um, shall I say, prevalent, you know. I mean, I am discussing horror stories here. I'm not discussing normal stories, so I don't think they're prevalent at all. But I do think that uh, they are there. There are enough of them around that they become a thing. That they become something that is known as that guy. Um, in terms of advice, one bat you you said it to you said it yourself. Like it's not worth it. You should have just kicked them out and then taken it on the chin. And 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 if the fucking manager wants to come over and say, well, you can't do that. Say, well. Lay out all of his behaviours. He's doing this, 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 and this. And nobody's having a good time because of this guy. But you want to keep him here because he puts money on you in your till. Fine. You know what? I'm done with this shift for now. Run this game on your own. See you later. And walk out. That's the best way to do it. That is honestly the best way to do it. If you can afford to do that and not be kicked out of your flat or apartment or whatever, do it. In, in that situation, it's not worth the hassle. You know, a, a, a hobby store job is not worth it. It's just not. It's just not. Even Games Workshop. The amount of times I should have said to my old manager, yeah, do you know what? Why don't you run this... Get off your fucking ass. Come over here and you run this game for all these kids. How about, how about you do that instead of critiquing what the kids are doing, what I'm doing, right? You come over here and you run it. If you're, if you're that offended by how this game is going, you come over here, you run it. I'm done with this shift. I'll see you later. I'm just walking. I should have done that multiple times. Multiple times. I would have saved myself so much stress you know, so much heartache down the road by, by staying with the company that there are multiple times when I should have just told them to fuck off and say, look, you know what? Right, you know, because this would happen all the time. Like, every single Sunday, and there are there is somebody who who um, works at Games Workshop who works at a similar store um, who has been who has been speaking to me very recently, and, and I, I'd be very interested to see if they still do this. Um, but in our store, we used to have a beginner's day on a Sunday 
And on the Sunday, generally, with me and the other staff member would uh, do rock, paper, scissors for who was going to take the kids that week because it was hell. And we both hated it. Um, so, you know, invariably, I would lose a lot because I'm no good at rock, paper, scissors. And, you know, and the other guy was generally a nice guy, so I didn't want him to get too stressed out. So I'd end up doing it quite a lot. But anyway. So, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't enforce the rules with these kids as much as, as I... As I as I would in an intro game. You know, I wanted them to enjoy the hobby. So I'd boil down the rules. And I would even have a cheat sheet on me of the rules, one-page rules of Warhammer 40,000, 8th edition. I'd, I'd do that. I wrote them uh, in, as a one-page spread and handed them out to parents. So the parents could come in and they could literally read the rules and be like, oh, this is dead easy. Right, okay, I get this. And so when they went and bought their starter box set, they would then have the big rule book and it's not so intimidating because they already know the core rules on this one piece of paper. You know, and they, they're able to do that. Um, I did this for two weeks while my manager was off, and the, the day he came back was when we had that set to of him saying, "What is this? Why are they not playing Warhammer Forty Thousand? Why, why are they? Why are they playing their own rules?" I said, "Well, they're not playing their own rules. I, I'm having this conversation in front of the people playing the game. How awkward is that, right?" I said, "They're not playing their own rules. They're playing Warhammer Forty Thousand rules, just simplified, because they're starting out in the hobby. It's called Beginner's Day." Fucking asshole. It's beginner's day. The beginners. This kid here is five. What do you want him to do? Figure out armor negation and armor penetration and damage charts? Just shut up. <laughs> just. Anyway. Um, you know, so I, I was just like, yeah. You know, and he said, no, don't use those rules. Use the actual rules or don't play at all. So now I've got to turn around to these like eight or nine people and eight or nine sets of kids and say, listen, guys, we're going to have to crack out the rule books because, you know, those are the rules. And that's what we did. And afterwards, one of the dads literally came up to me and was like, yeah, sorry about that, man. I didn't mean to get into trouble. And I was like, Matt, that's not, that's not your fault. Uh, my decision to run the game like that, it's been going really well for a couple of weeks. He doesn't want to do it that way. That's on him, not on you and not on me. It's all good, you know? But, um, yeah, this is a case of people getting in the way of the hobby, which I, I really, really despise. But anyway. Anyway. Tangent over. So, uh, Fred Fininski. I assume your name's Fred and you're from Finland. Uh, my first model ever, a Sidonian Dragon. Painted it early June. Same day I bought it in the Oslo Games Workshop. Ha ha! You're from Norway. Bollocks. Um, I, I put him in a padded box for my travels and headed to Germany. Y'all know that heat wave, the big one? Yeah. Damaged his leg and warped the chassis. Two of his antennae are kaput, poor sod. Well, you know, I guess... I guess you can, yeah. I, I mean, that, that is very unlucky, man. But that, that is typical of somebody from a colder climate. <laughs> Not expecting a heat wave. That is typical. It's like, oh, yeah, it shall be fine. You put it in there, and of course, off it goes. Um, so... Bernhardt says, not entirely sure if it's the kind of horror story you're looking for, man, but here's a horror story for you. Me and my closest friend were playing a small-scale game on the living room floor. Mistake! Mistake. I know it says it in the rule book. Don't do it. Don't play it on the floor. Just a squad each side to test new units. Okay, fair enough. Halfway through, he sits up, stares at me and says, oh shit, and immediately fell into an epileptic fit. Luckily, it wasn't the first time I'd, I'd seen it, so... And managed to secure the models for safety first before quickly coming to his aid. <laughs> I love how he went to the models first. <laughs> like, just fuck this guy. Just run over. Oh no, my Caldor Drago model. I paid £17 for that. I need to get. Oh my god. I love this guy. He's hilarious. <laughs> just. The guy, poor guy sitting there frothing at the mouth. Just like, you know, whacking his head on the, on the, on the headboard there. And you're just like, well, let me just let me just get my custodies out the way. Just, just, let's, not, let's not be silly here. Oh, brilliant. Um, but yeah, a story we still laugh about to this day, but truly a game of 40k I'll never forget. Bernhardt, you're a legend, man. <laughs> fuck, fuck out your friends if you're, ever, if you're ever in a life or death scenario. You're literally Joey when he saves the sandwich instead of saving his friend on, the, on that flight. Anyway. Um, the real baby Lou. Uh, my worst game ever has got to be my most recent one. Oh, I'm sorry about that. It was Orcs, me, versus Custodes. I came in with two battalions, including 90 boys, 30 grots, and a load of speed freaks, buggies, and bikes. The opponent had 11 models 
on the board at turn one. Okay. Between that and a handful of massive Terminators that deep struck with 12-inch flamers and maybe four more dudes, he tabled me, then spent his last turn scoring objectives to beat me 11-8. It was the first time I've ever lost every single model on the board. I think I killed four custodian guards and one jet bike and that was it. It was a brutal, frustrating slog of throwing hundreds of dice and waiting for him to all runs once for his armor saves, feeling like my entire army was worthless. His weapons uh, almost always had enough AP that I'd be saving on 7 or 8 plus, and his guards all had 2 plus 3 plus plus save. Basically, it was five turns of my units are worthless whilst his are untouchable. It was not fun. I faced custodies before as Tau and won some, lost some more. But this was a terrible crushing loss that honestly makes me want to refuse to fight that BS army ever again. Yes, um, I would say with the custodies army, the, 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 the way to beat them is to outmaneuver them and generally dogpile them from all sides with your most heavy stuff. I only know because you need to do the same thing to Grey Knights and I play Grey Knights and the, and the, the games I tend to lose, the ones where the, the opponent very skillfully um, surrounds me and charges me all at once and nukes two or three of my really big units in two or three turns in close combat. Don't rely on shooting. If you rely on shooting Terminators to kill them, I, I, what can I tell you? You're not going to kill them. Especially if you've got Storm Shields. You're just not going to do it. Um, a lot of Grey Knights have technology that equals kind of a Storm Shield too. You know, they're very, very tough. Especially Paladins. So, yeah. Um, with Custodes, very similar. Don't rely on shooting. And unless you're really good at shooting, don't rely on them. Um, get all your boys, charge into combat, chop them up. It sounds to me like you've also rolled pretty badly there too. Um, because uh, I've, I recently played a game against a friend of mine and I rolled decently well throughout the entire game and he rolled pretty poorly and you know it wasn't he's was playing admec too which is the most op and he's, he's he took some really op stuff as well and i just had white scars um and managed to 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 actually table him you know so it, it wasn't like a, a but i i would have tabled him anyway we think think when we got to turn five and we called it he had like two uh, one tank and then like a one model left and i had like three squads so it can the game can go that way sometimes. So don't get too demoralised. It's happened to me before. It will happen to me again. Um, take the wins and take the losses. That's all I can say. You know, um, it does sound like he power gamed it quite a lot. But just earmark that guy and know that if he asks you for a game again, just say look. Not if you take one of these lists. You know, yeah, I didn't have fun last time, but in a nice way. Don't be a dick about it. So, um, fusion crane. In my first game I played a few months ago, I was playing against my girlfriend and I realised she's a power gamer in the making. Oh, it's horrible when that happens. Oh, it's horrible. It's even worse when it's a friend of yours. You know, like if it's a friend of yours and you can you can see like the little cogs whirring in his head and he's like, meh, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna yeah, use this strategy and that strategy and and you're like, Oh for fuck's sake, here we go, I've created a monster. Um so let me read the rest of the story rather than blathering on, eh? And a potentially toxic one at that. Now, okay, right. I want to rewind here to my own last relationship. So, as a lot of you know, when I came back from America, I was pretty heartbroken because my uh, proposed marriage over there had fallen apart. And it was pretty shocking. And it was horrible. Um, but uh, only recently through therapy have I been able to acknowledge that this person had a lot of flaws. And, <laughs> and one of them was the fact that she was an awful winner. I mean... To the point of toxicity, and she would, and she was one of these people who never, because she'd been told by her parents, uh, well, one of them especially, that she was amazing her entire life, like she did, literally thought that that no, 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 I can do, I'm not doing anything wrong here, I'm not being toxic, I'm just, it's just banter, you know, it's just banter, and she was really bad, like to the point where a friend of mine, John, who has appeared on the channel fleetingly. Um, he is the most chill guy when it comes to um, board games. Like, and he never makes a comment on anybody, even when he's playing at tabletop games. Never met, says boo to a goose when he's playing these games. Um, he even said, "Wow, you're a bit of a bit of a bad winner, aren't you?" But like, and I've never heard him say that to anybody before. And he was just like, "You flabbergasted about how bad she was." So yeah, it is a real. I would class it as a real relationship red flag. Actually, it's kind of like. Because wargaming and stuff like that is so big in, in my in my life, I would class that as if I went on a date and the girl abused the waiting staff. It's the same kind of red, red flag for me. I'd be like, ooh, oh, hang on, you know. Um, 
So let me read the rest of the story. She is at least aware of it and doesn't plan on going, uh, doing a lot of competitive play. I love her and it's fun to play against her, but it worries me how she might react to losing a game against a random guy at a games workshop or friendly local game store. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I got that too. Like my ex was very, you know, she didn't lose a lot because she would power game everything, and I never would, you know. And people playing her never would as well. I would call out for it all the time. And the thing is. Bad winners turn people into bad losers. Do you know what I mean? If you're a really bad winner, then you're gonna you'll come across a lot of people where you go, well, they're just a bad loser. No, mate, mate, they're a really good loser until they play you. You're just a twat who brings that out on people. So maybe just knock it on the head. You know, take your win gracefully. Stop being a prick. Um, but yes, these people are in the hobby, and it's very, very, very annoying. So G three R Sky. <laughs> fuck is these names g3 arse guy says there was a that guy back when i played fifth edition in high school one second let me just take a swig of my tea this is a long one also if you are an editor and you're willing to do some work for exposure um because i'm really cheap if you want to edit out my sips of, of tea then you you may do so if you want to contact me do you want the discord um you know, if the channel goes really big, I'd love to pay, pay people for helping me out on the channel. I would love to do that if the channel goes goes where I want it to go. Anyway, there was a that guy back when I played 5th edition in high school. He always brought a very competitive list. Tried fudging movements and stats, the works. Oh, I hate that. So we were all pretty fed up with him, but I still wanted to beat him just once for the satisfaction of it all. So I start reading up on his codex, so I know all of his rules and, and can call him out in his shit. Soon after, he asks if I want to play some time, and I say, sure. Not specifying the date and time, kind of just saying we'll play soon. This motherfucker just shows up at my house on a random Saturday, saying I said we should play soon. So I'm like, okay, I guess. I wasn't doing anything anyways. So we get at it, and he starts getting into his usual bullshit. This is when I finally get to say, no, I think you're wrong on that. It should be this. I don't remember exactly what it was we were arguing over. It been, it's been years. He responds saying, no, it's definitely that. I asked, I asked to look at his codex then because I've been reading it and I know that he's lying. He has the audacity to say I'm not allowed to read his codex. We go back and forth and I finally get him to quit with his BS, call him out on all of his lies and finally beat him in a game. Probably the most satisfying win I've ever had. Well... You know, um, good on you for doing that, and good on the other guy for, for taking it, because I know a lot of people who would have just packed up their models and left when you caught them in the act, to be honest with you. Um, but good on good on you. Good on you for catching him. All right. Next. Let me just have a look here. Lovely stuff. So, Omega sent me something. So last month, I had an interesting interaction between myself and a, myself, 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 and a Games Workshop store manager. I'll briefly uh, uh, summarise the events that occurred. I haven't played a single game of Warhammer since 8th edition first came out. I took a break for most of 8th and came back around July. I painted my army, got them all done and ready for a game in October. I contact my, contacted my GW store, which is the closest place I could play a game. I contacted my opponent, who I will name John and set up a 1,000 points game of my Eldar versus his Dark Angels. I got there pretty early, so I busted out my army and got them ready. That way we can start the game quickly. As I laid out my models, the GW manager looked at them and saw that one of my Wraith Blades did not match the box art. He told me, paraphrased, Hey man, I'm sorry, but you can't use that model because it has been reposed to not match the box art. What?! This model wasn't skewed for advantage. It had no height alterations or base changes, just reposed to look more heroic. I can post link if required. I then reply, please express my dearest, deepest apologies to John, as I will not be playing this game here. I smiled and packed up in literally one minute and got out quick. When I got in my car, I laughed so hard I was, in, I was nearly in tears. I texted John, told him I wasn't playing due to what happened, never set foot in that store again. There are some other stories about that place, including the time the manager started kicking out a 12-year-old who didn't have money for Chaos Spawn and wanted to proxy his father's old Chaos Dreadnought as a Chaos Spawn. Yeah, and that kid got kicked out and I almost cried for him. I went and bought him some Nurgle AOS stuff, 
and told him it's for his chaos spawn. But the Wraith Blade was the last straw. So I would like to know, have you ever had any any things happen to you like this in your store? Um, no, because I was running the store. And so, you know, generally I didn't put up with that bullshit. I wouldn't never do that to somebody. I mean, I thought that story was going in the direction of, hey man, that sword is not Games Workshop. It's from Forge World or whatever, blah, blah, blah. So you can't use it. Do you know what I mean? I, but to didn't which is dickhead in itself, dickhead behavior in itself. But say you can't use the model because it doesn't match the box art. This is what this is this is why I made my last video and I'm trying not to get into a rant here. This is why I made my last video. This right here. This right here. I bet you that store was empty. I bet you that store was empty because they're always fucking empty because they're not about growing the hobby anymore. They're about ringing and dry and ringing and wrestling every single penny out of your wallet as as humanly possible i was surprised he didn't try and sell you one another set of them so you could build them properly you know what i mean that sort of a thing i just i just these fucking people do these fucking people i just these fucking crap people get them out get them out annoying me anyway infomorph says this was back in late 4th or early 5th edition, but I, play, I played a pickup game at the store I was a regular at with a new Tyranid player against my guard. He said he was quite new, so I uh, so was wondering if he could use models that were just bases to flesh out some of his gaunt units. I figured it didn't really matter if there were 10 blank bases in, in, in across a board and across a few big hordes of gaunt, so I agreed to help him learn the game. Cut to turn 3, and he's virtually arguing I can't draw a line of sight to the gaunt unit because the bases were being blocked by a short piece of scattered terrain. There was no turn four. We also had... And that's fucking... I mean, yeah, okay. Come on, dude. Come on. Play the game, literally. We also had a guy in his early 20s who would throw his very well-painted models in rage the second anything went wrong. He eventually got banned from the store for pushing a staff person trying to calm him down. Last I saw him before, he enlisted with the Marines and disappeared. Yeah, probably best place for him, to be honest with you. Also, that store was kind of a dumping ground for younger kids whose parents didn't didn't want to uh, didn't want to mind them. And one kid drank four 12-hour energy drinks in a few minutes, and the store had to call an ambulance. Another time, right when Cities of Death came out, a kid impaled his hand on a on a piece of new terrain, so the store clipped off all the pointy bits. None of that could really be blamed on the store, though, and just negligent parents. After I took a pause from the hobby due to university and the like, and after coming back for ninth edition only to pl only to play with people I like outside of a tournament setting, so way less horror stories since then. Okay, well that's good. Um, the parent thing happens more often than you think. It happens way more often than you think. Um, and there's not really much you can do to get rid of it to like to, to not have it happen in your store because you want more people in your store at the end of the day. Um, and you never know, like, I, I've had a few kids come in and be dropped off, and their parents end up dropping a few hundred pounds that day, just for me minding them, and, you know, you know, getting them into the hobby, essentially. So, you know, every, everyone's a recruitment opportunity, I guess. So we're going to finish off with a, with a long one. Um, if you have sent me any, uh, stories, they will be in the next one, because I, I am, I am not the end of my mailbag, hooray! Um, I am not reading the new one. Uh, the new mailbag until it fills up with a few hundred stories but we're at the end of this one now we've done about 80 90 anyway this is by uh those are balls and this is a link to a story sent to me by by a community member so thank you those are balls those are balls i swear you guys make these names up just so i can make a dick out of myself when i'm saying them on my videos um so story of a douchebag gamer Hello, <clears throat> just like I just felt like sharing a little story of a rather unpleasant game I had the following week. The following week? You mean going into the future? The previous week, you mean. Before I start, I just want to share a bit of background about myself. I've been playing miniature games for about 13 years, starting with Battlefleet Gothic. I've worked for Games Workshop and I'm very very heavily involved in the hobby. Help, a, help run a gaming club and organise... And help organise and help in running two large tournaments every year. 
you know what? I used to have a go at Bill Burr for not being able to read off his mail properly, uh, but now I'm starting to see where, you know, that I should get off my high horse. I pride myself that I have a fun time whether I win or lose, and I am a nice guy to play against. A good example of this is at a tournament a few weeks ago, I won Best Sportsman for both 40k and Warhammer Fantasy. I, did, I even did pretty well, so it was, it was not just pity votes. Anyways, to the story. Being bored at home, I decided to go to one of the local games workshop stores for a veterans night. Has been a couple of years. Uh, since he got into the hobby, I suppose. I suppose. I have not really gone since recently, uh, gone recently since I have my gaming club and I'm not fond of them allowing non-painted, non-assembled forces to play at the store. Fair enough. There is an area of, that is an area of discussion for another time. Anyways, the store was pretty packed. And after a while, I got paired up with an individual that will henceforth be known as Mr. DB. We got to our table and started to set up. I told him I had a ready-made list, and he claimed to have the same, but it was not printed out. It became apparent really quick that he was changing up his list as he saw me unpack my models to give himself an advantage. Should mention, he was playing, he is playing Marines, and I have my towel. I also remember his list being a bit large for 1,250 points. When he was finally satisfied, he was about 300 points over when he said uh, what, what he said when I looked up at his, uh, at, uh, when I looked up at home after. So if I see typos in this, they throw me off reading, I'm sorry. Um, he's about 300 points over what he said when I looked up at home after. Anyways, this was already bugging me a bit, but since it was just a fun game, I was not too concerned and I felt could deal with, I could, I could deal with this list. In the end, my list was a commander, two crisis bodyguards, three broadsides, two squads of fire warriors and transport, some crew, a sniper drone team. Finally, total, uh, with my upgrades, was 1249. His list, as best as I, I can remember, captain and command squad in Razorback, chaplain, one dreadnought in drop pod, two times ten tactical marine squads in rhinos, ten, ten man assault squad, terminator assault squad, five man bike squad, so without any upgrades, he is over the 1250 points, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he is way over. Uh, about 400 points over, actually. Yeah, about 350, 400. Anyway, well, this is where the pleasantries ended. He wins the role to deploy and sets up. During my deployment, Mr. DB feels the need to criticise everything I'm doing and claims you have already lost, without anything even happening. I managed to steal the initiative, according to Mr. DB, this marks me as a cheater, since I'm obviously using weighted dice after one roll, and proceeds to air his issues with Tal being OP to everybody around us. Please remember, all I have done at this point is roll to steal the initiative. So now I have ruined the game for him. He goes into uber rules Nazi jackass mode. He tells me to measure for every model when I move a unit. Normally I measure and move the front rank. Uh, from the unit and then move up the rest behind yeah that's the way to do it i i think this is a pretty standard practice for everyone who plays the game yep it is and he is still going on about how unfair it is that i stole the first turn my first round of shooting was uneventful with my broadsides killing a rhino and the other units killing a handful of marines but a pretty standard first turn mr db is still brooding and very confidently explains to me how i am lucky that i got to do that much damage because if he would have had the first turn he would have just tabled me i kid you not he genuinely genuinely believed he could have just wiped me out in, at the top of turn one i move a couple of suits in the assault phase and in the assault phase and and onto his turn one all right now that he gets to move all the rules go out the window <laughs> He starts off by measuring his moves and then moving his, his figures to the approximate area he measured, giving himself an extra couple of inches. I asked him to measure the first rank properly and then move the rest up to avoid this. But he does not really care about my concerns and continues to give himself extra movement. In his shooting phase, he starts rolling dice and picking them up so quickly I don't get to see his rolls. Mm, big bugbear of mine. I ask him to slow down and go over what he is doing i.e. what the weapons are shooting, but I get told not to worry about it since he knows what he is doing. In more than, in more than once, he counts misses as hits and, uh, or tells me to roll saves for shots that fail to wound. I try to tell him politely that he is making mistakes with his rolling, but for my trouble and patience, I get told to stop making excuses and trying to bend the rules, make him look bad, because I know I'm going to lose. 
I have had enough and now simply pack up my army. Mr. DV wants to continue and does not understand what my problem is. This is my story. I just wanted to share because I'm having a really hard time at the moment. But thank you for your channel. And oh, thank you, dude. Um, I don't let me read out. I, I always cut off the bit where people like, you know, you know say nice things because that's between me and them. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, this kind of player does exist in the hobby. And I genuinely think that if somebody rolls their dice and then immediately tries to pick them up or things like that, just do exactly what this brave fellow did. Pack up your models and take it on the chin, right? Take it on the chin. Just pack up your models and walk away. Just walk away. When I say take it on the chin, I mean the, the shame of packing up your models because this guy, he's going to try and shame you and whinge and cry and say, this guy was losing, so he needs to, he's, he's leaving and he can't take this and he can't take that. These guys exist in the hobby, right? Uh, what you need to do is trust that the more you know, cooler heads at the game store will know what you're doing and will understand what you're doing and move away. And if anyone asks you, calmly explain to them why you're while you're opting to not continue with this game. Because, you know, you know, the other guy is bending the rules, he's making extra movement, he's not showing me any of his dice that he's rolling. He's hitting for thing he, he's getting me to make saves for things that haven't hit. He's generally bending the rules for, you know, his own his own benefit. I'm not enjoying the game, therefore I am refusing to continue with this game. They're my models, I'm packing them away, and I will see you all next week. That's the best thing to do. Or even stay at the, stay at the store and play somebody else. And show that guy up by having a really good time in your next game. That's the best thing to do. Remove yourself from that situation and have a phenomenal game with the next person who comes along. Because 95% of the people in the hobby are awesome people to have really good games with. This person obviously isn't one of them. So... um. What about you guys? Have you had any horror stories that we've been that we've covered during the this episode? We've, we've had a very big long one. I did promise you a long one. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, but thank you very much for watching. I love you a long time. And I'll speak to you in the next one. It should be another nice long one, but we'll see. <laughs> nice long one. Uh, I crack myself up. <laughs>